WRTR Real Talk Radio Featured guest DJs Original shows The hottest DJs from around the world Back like your anxiety after you look in the mirror And find out you ain't got no edges This is WRTR Real Talk Radio I am Marcus Smoot And this is your boy Tigger man What it do Tigger? Hey nothing much Nothing much It is good to see you What's your mood for this week? What you feeling? Tired. Oh. Why? Why are you so tired all the time? You don't do shit other than party. We always no. see you on in well, party. I work. I deal with people all day long mm. via email and over the phone and Zoom calls and some more. Mm. Okay. No problem. And it, it gets draining. Does it now? <laughs> yes, it does. Okay. Do tell. I want to know. Do tell. You don't be doing nothing. People see- People be saying stupid shit all the time over the phone, asking stupid questions. Mm. So, what you're really trying to say is that your mood is a little edgy this week. <laughs> a little on the edge. I exit that, yes. <laughs> it is. Well, it's good to see you. Uh, Lyric is not here. She's still down. Man, y'all send prayers to her. She's going through a rough time. We love you. Hope you, yeah. hope yes, you have sis. a speedy recovery. We do. We hope all right. That's speedy to recover. Definitely. So, that being said, now, so for this week, we decided to change things up a little bit. So, we're going to do our whole black, you know, our thing where we promote a black creator or talent or business owner. And if you would like to be showcased in the future, hit us up, wrtrradio at gmail.com. But right after this, we will be talking to our host. He's an internet sensation. Um, listen, he's been in several videos. He's in those videos um, that you see on TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere, Instagram, where he's playing his mom in a really in a dope wig, but he's nope. acting like a kid. He plays a kid named Orange. And, yeah, like, the kid's name is Orange. Like, it's a play on the, the words orange. Anyways, uh, we'll let him tell you about it. Coming up. Well, I don't think there's really any such thing as a gay community, because in the Bible it says in Romans 1 why people fall into perversions. And, like, you should all just thank a straight person that we're all here today on the earth and that uh, we can all be friends. You know, in a public library, they have a pride set up. Now, I'm not anti any of that. I could care less what you do with your life. The moment you start pushing on me and my children, then I have an issue with it. You know. But what about, I'm going to play devil's advocate because it's my job a little bit. 1965, you come to the library here in Pickens, South Carolina, and there's a little display about um, about civil rights and right. uh, and uh, the March on Washington or the, uh, the Birmingham church bombing. See, it's not about, this is not about rights. This is on, this is people telling me I have to be okay with who you are. You know, if they would come and talk to me and say, hey, this is who I am, I like to sleep with dudes, or I like this, I like, okay, don't care. You know, I can live my life just fine without that. You know, if that's how you want to live your life, you go live yours, I'll live mine. There again, once you start pushing the narrative on me, then I have an issue with it. That would be like- And you do, for someone who doesn't understand what you're saying, pushing the narrative on you, what is, Define, describe that. Like the, the drag queen story time. Why do my kids, I mean, now of course my kids have never seen this. Why is that okay? That's t- showing kids that this is the way things should be when it really should not. You know, there again, that's how you want to live your life. Go live it. Don't put it in my face. You know, that would be like me saying, well, why don't you have tattoos? Well, you need to go get tattoos because you don't side with me because you have no tattoos. Do you want tattoos? Uh, I don't. Okay. So, I have no pain threshold. Well, I don't either. And we're black with black people. What it do, Bobby Jarrell? Not much, man. How's it going? It goes well. Man, we're happy to have you here today. So, all right. Thank you for me. So, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself, sir. Uh, there's a lot to tell, so it's hard to break it down to a little bit. Um, all right. So, let's start with what you are most noted for. What you know? What what's your claim to fame, sir? Uh, I guess people, my claim to fame right now at the moment would be Orange. So like doing TikTok videos, 
Um, but even before Horizon, I did a character called Lavaca, and at that time, people loved the Lavaca character. Wait a minute, I don't uh, think I'm familiar. <laughs> you got to, to look up Lavaca. So Lavaca is like a character I kind of based a little bit off of one of my cousins, who's a very, uh, she's a little out there, um, just personality, don't care what she says, what she does, so that's where... Lavaca came from. Okay. Um, then, like, with Orange, uh, I did, I started doing that character a couple years back, and once TikTok came around, um, I decided to put some of those old videos on TikTok, and then from there, it just took off, and so it's like, now, all, that's all you know me for is um, Orange. Like, I was in Atlanta this past weekend, Uh-oh. and I went to this uh, funk festival in the park, and, you know, they were playing music, and we were singing, and this lady turns around, and she's like, she's like, oh, I hear you, I hear you. Then she stops. She's like, "Wait, I know you. She's like, I know you. I know you." Just like, oh, wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. That's that is too funny. Wow. <laughs> and wait, and who did you say the uh, the OG bitch was? What what was the OG? The character? Yeah. Uh, Lavaca. Lava- L A Lavaca. Okay, <laughs> Lavaca. Okay, I needed to know how to spell it because you know. That sound real urban, you know. Yeah, it's very, 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 very. Urban All right, so you told us Lavaca, but who is Keisha based off of? Keisha, Keisha's kind of just based off of like just like different family members, uh, with the, just in the black community. That that mom that's trying her best, um, trying to keep it together, but at the same time, you know, still young, want to have her. A life and then enjoy it, uh, but you got a kid that you got to take care of. You got that baby daddy that you're dealing with. Uh, so just she's just kind of like a, a mixture of different people. So not one person in particular, like Lavaca. Got you. Got you. Well, I mean, I definitely, I mean, we're going to get to know a lot more about you as the show progresses anyways, but I did have some talking points that I wanted to ask. So... One of the videos, okay, so you being a viral internet sensation, like one of your videos I think has how many million views? I think the biggest one I have is like, is right now it's at 9.9 million. Okay. So it's like a little shy of 10 million, yeah. So that, wow, so that being the case, are you usually the person, like, does that make you nervous? Does that give you like anxiety or anything, you know, you walk outside? I mean, are people at work looking at you crazy? Like, what goes on in your life? So... I guess one of the things that I, I'm learning to do is kind of embrace that I'm not just a nobody in my mind. I think I'm just like this average guy, which I'm, I'm, I'm not, 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 not by any means that I'm saying I'm this famous guy. But at the same time, it's like I do know that there are people that, that recognize me and that know me. Like I've been in a, a grocery store and I've had kids just like staring at me wide eyed. <laughs> 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 Like outside of that internet personality, um, I'm a very closed off, kind of shy guy. Speak and up so, just a little bit into your uh, mic so we can hear you just a little bit more. See, I have my, my AirPods on. There you, there you go. There you go. Whatever you just did. Sound all right. Sound all right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but no, so I, you know, I'm, I'm kind of learning to embrace that there are people that know me. I've been in the club and people, you know, randomly come up to me like, I love your content. I'm like, oh, thank you. Oh, in the club? Yeah, in the club. I go out every night. Love love your content. What's up with uh, (laughs) our play? But but I I, kind of give off uh, like RBS when I'm out and about in public. Okay. So I think people aren't as, um, they're they're a little nervous to approach me. So if anybody out there is listening and and they, they, you know, interested in seeing me in public and saying hi, you can say hi. You can say hi. I don't, I don't fight, but I feel like, like for example, I was in, um, Atlanta. I'm not, I don't want to keep saying Atlanta. Like I go to Atlanta a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, it sounds like it. <laughs> don't judge me on here. Don't judge me on here. Uh, no, no. So I, I went to Atlanta a couple of months back. I think it was May, and I was in Walgreens. And as I was walking out, there was a guy standing outside. He was like, "Do the voice." And I was like, what? (laughs) That's creepy. I feel like they do that to R. Kelly in jail right now. Like, I feel like that's what they do on to R. Kelly right now. Do the voice, nigga. You know what this is. Like, what? Yeah, yeah, the guy, he was like, do the voice. And I was like, what? He was like, he was like, from the videos. I was like, oh. No, I'm not doing that. But, you know, I got to learn to be more open and flexible and let people know that I'm approachable. So, right. Wow, I wonder if Beyonce deals with that too. Ooh, do Halo real quick. I can, like, I, can, I can only imagine. And you know damn well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think people get 
get close enough to her. Exactly. To her exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Julius won't have that. that nah, exactly. Happen. Julius would <laughs> shit a cat. Are you kidding me? Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that being – okay, so to take it to a little bit more of a serious note, one of the videos that you did, um, this was maybe a – shoot, my days run together, so it probably could be a year ago. But one of the things that you addressed were uh, uh, was shadow banning. Uh-huh. And for those people that, you know, are listening right now and that's a completely new word for them, can you tell us a little bit about what it means and then what how it's affected you? So I think right now it's kind of going a little bit past, like, just shadow banning. Um, the way the platform is going now, everything is being monetized. So in order for them to control... And you're talking about know, social like, media, just so we're clear. Yes, like right. social media, yes. like, in general. Um, like every website now has that where you can monetize your videos. And so they're getting paid by these uh, companies to be like, oh, you have your people do these videos for us. We're going to pay you. You pay them. So, of course, they're going to focus on those people that are doing those sponsorships and things like that. So, outside of that, like, you know, for me, uh, I've been monetized for two years or so now. Mm -hmm. But I'm not doing a lot of sponsorships. And some of it because I'm like, I'm not about to promote a project or a product that I don't like or something. And so, uh, some people are doing it. Like, they're making these videos. Because they want the money. Exactly. (laughs) And so, like, that's the videos that they're, the platforms are putting forth in the, the forefront and so like other people like myself i just want to make my content promote my content but i i don't get that same um that i don't get that same support from the, the platforms so initially like when we you know was complaining about the shadow ban it was you know a lot of black content creators that were not their videos weren't being promoted like on tiktok there's the for you page mm-hmm. and so the tiktok decides which videos go to the um to the for you page okay and at the end of the day like you know if you, you're trying to make content you're trying to get it out there they're the ones who are deciding what video goes goes to the front and that's you know pretty much with anything like i guess like within that the entertainment realm like we hear there's people that come out with new music new movies and stuff like that but like, oh a new movie in the theater i'm like when did this movie come out <laughs> like, right where's the promotion you know so that, that's that's pretty much what it is hmm. any questions uh <clears throat> from your side ticket man Oh no, not really. He already answered. He already answered what I was going to ask. <laughs> Definitely. So, uh, balance. <laughs> so, uh, one of the things I wanted to ask. So, you talked about how people see you, they recognize you, especially in the grocery store, stuff like that. Now, for I, the people, so, hold on, hold on. So, you talk about the grocery store. I was in the grocery store one time. Okay. And, and I'm getting, I was getting some meat. Like I was, just, and I had my back, like it was against the wall, and I'm looking at the meat uh-huh. or whatever. And this guy was like, orange. Oh. I turned around, he was like, I recognize you from the back of your head. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So I got to ask. So Damn. that, yo, Damn. so outside of that being creeptastic AF, yeah. I got to ask. So balancing attention from people, like the people that have watched your videos and that watch your videos, binge watch them and stuff. Like for those mm-hmm. people that feel like they've, like they have a connection with you because, you know, you're like, you know, they're sending it to their friends. Hey, did you see the new Orange video? Or, you know, mm-hmm. they're retweeting it or, you know, reposting it or just sharing it and things like that. Are, do you ever run into any boundary issues with people? No, I would, like, so far I would say no. Like, and, and just to be clear, like, I don't got that many people coming up to me, like, every day, all day. I like mean, that. it could be no. just... It's up at random times. Yeah. But I, I think day. it's also, like, I'm a short guy, but I'm a real stocky guy. So, like, that's one of the things, like, I don't have to worry about people, like, kind of overstepping. Okay. So, like, <laughs> they, they probably like, oh, I can listen to you. Like, you might punish me in my face. Which I'm not a violent person. I'm not a violent person at all. Right. But I think that that might be the perception. So, I, I haven't, you know, come across anything that, like, been crazy. But you definitely so subscribe to fuck around and find out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I got two I got two shirts that say that. Mm-hmm. As <laughs> do I. I. <laughs> Let me borrow one. And I have one with a uh, with a folding chair on it. <laughs> so let's see. So you haven't had any issues like that. So I mean that's in person, but what about online? Your online presence. Do people like I know for me personally, I've had my you know, I've had my feel of, you know, balloon knots and ashy dicks in my inbox and stuff just dealing with you know people on a regular so that being said you know do you have 
you know, similar experiences with people maybe not, you know, being able to distinguish between the person and the personality? I've had a few, not, not a lot. And I would say it's not that they aren't out there. I just, you know, in order for me to protect my peace, like I choose what I entertain, what I allow into my, into my space. Mm-hmm. Um, so there are times where like if I, yeah. if there's a handful of comments that I've seen, like I was in the last year or so, um, like if, it, if it's not productive, if it's not nice and kind, um, I just delete it. Like it doesn't make, I'm, if, if I, just because they're putting the energy out there, I don't have to entertain that energy. And I don't need that energy in my space. And, like, the people that, that support me, um, like, online and even, like, the fans and family members that I know, uh, like, you know, we don't subscribe to that negativity. And that's just something that I've always shown to, uh, you know, like Michelle Michelle Obama said, you know, when they go low, we go high. Right. I'm not saying that I won't stomp your ass into the ground, but, I, like, I don't have to entertain that. Now, if it's in my face, and a lot of times, you know, like, people... It's the uh, keyboard warriors and internet bullies that are only going to say those things online. Right. So again, like if you know, you come to my face and say, it, then we'll have a problem. But online, you somewhere hiding behind a camera, behind a keyboard, I don't need to entertain that. Excellent. So I feel you, I feel you on that. Yep. So as we move forward, um, yeah, you guys have plenty of Bobby Jarrell to take over and help us with the rest of the show. So that being said, since Lyric isn't here this week, we are going to go ahead and take your advice request. That's up next. We'll be right back. What do you think is more dangerous to the country, drag or guns? Drag, for sure. How come? It's poisoning the the youth. That's what's going to run our country. It's scary. But guns, guns is my right. I know how to handle them. I take training. I've raised my kids. Guns are our primary. It's our right, our Second Amendment right that I refuse to give up, and many of our people refuse to give up. Not not even just talking about. I'm just talking about the danger. You you talked about how it's it's poisoning our kids from law-abiding citizens, and the thugs and the criminals are still going to have their guns. I want to be able to protect myself from a thug or a criminal. I want to protect, you know, if I'm in a school visiting my grandkids and there's a shooting, I want to be able to pull out and and stop. But you, you just said it, if there's a school shooting, I, I, as far as I can tell, people haven't died from drag, and that's why I asked the question. You know, it's, it, look at the drag, the transvestite that went in and did the school shooting. Come on, it's, it's a mental health, it's, it's mental health is what it is. The mental health and, you know, the, the books that are in our schools. So many things have got to change in our country. And Trump, Trump has making the change. And he's my president. And Biden, he don't even acknowledge in my brain as president. Pull up a seat for Lyric's Lessons on WRTI. Real Talk Radio at Lyric Bravado on Twitter. So we're back. In the building today, well, not in the building, but in the cyber building, anyways. Bobby Jarrell, what it do, man? Not much, not much. Just enjoying the conversation. Excellent. All right, so let's move on to the lyrics lesson. Since she isn't here this week, we're going to go ahead and take your advice request. You can send yours to wrtrradio at gmail.com. We will be happy to answer them for you. Hmm. Tick man, did you pull any letters? Because I got two of them. I did. I actually have two also. All right, you go first. All right, cool. Uh oh, hooked on phonics worked for you. <laughs> Shut up. Here we go. Shut up. Here we go. Shut up. Five L. All right, this one came from Anonymous. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's killer. It says, Dear Lyric, my brother is 53. He has one child, my 12-year-old nephew, Connor. Our father was difficult, and neither of us had many happy memories of times we shared with him. Perhaps in response to this, my brother seems incapable of socializing without his son. Many times he suggests outings to my husband and his friends and then throws in that he's planning on bringing Connor. Mm. We do not want the boy included in what we adults do. Oh. But we can't find a way of saying it to him. What are y'all doing? (laughs) Right. If I'm planning a dinner out or something else where I think he might invite his son. Uh Uh-oh. 
hold on. Oh, it's I'm sorry. Time, here, we go. here we go. I preface with a growing up's only clause. So basically, so yeah, that anytime they do a dinner or something, they always say adults only because they know he's going to end up bringing his son with them. Mm-hmm. I can't discuss it with my sister-in-law because even though I know she would understand, she wouldn't be tactful in mentioning it to my brother. My husband is not the type to say anything. It would mean more coming from him, but he doesn't want to call, he doesn't want to call upset. By the way, my brother is very outgoing and socially added, so it's not like he needs this 12 year old crutch. Oh God. <laughs> Any suggestions would most be appreciated. All right. So first I suggest us calling Big Bird and telling him to fail you because you clearly failed. <laughs> Hold on. Who are you talking to? <laughs> <laughs> I know you're not talking about me. <laughs> 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 I know you're not talking about me. Oh, no. But for the advice request, okay. So the overall question is what exactly? Like I don't get the overall question. What should she do? How should she approach the situation? Because she don't want to upset her brother by saying, "Stop inviting your twelve-year-old, t- t- ten, twelve-year-old son to these outings that we have." Okay. It's supposed to be all adult. It's supposed to be only adults, and you can keep inviting your child. Okay, Bobby, care to take this one? Well. So okay, the the brother's married or is, or is he the brother is married. The brother's married. Yes. I, I don't know because it's like maybe the son is the one that needs that that affection from the dad, and he feels like you know he got to show up unless he you know wasn't showing up before, and he needs to make up for some lost time or something like that. I don't know, but I think. Being a, my, my biggest thing is communication and being upfront and being yeah. transparent about exactly. whatever it is. So if, if I was her, I was just to let him know, like, hey, I love my nephew, but I don't need him around all the time. Like, hey, if we're going to do something this week, let it be an adult thing, but next week we can have, like, a, a function, and then the kids can come into that. But, like, having that time to let him know, like, hey, we want to turn up as an adult. Right. Have all the time together. Exactly. That's what I always do. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Depending now, on who, if you don't if you don't receive that well, then he just don't need to come to the adult function. There exactly. you go. There you go. Because depending <laughs> on who you are is gonna depend on how you receive that. I mean, for you know, people in my life, I feel like I could just outright say, "Don't bring that little nigga." But you know, like, but other people, you know, they may feel a certain type of way. So hey, you know what? You answered that perfectly. Good for you. There you go. But I'm kind of wondering the kid would be that's bad. common sense. I mean, that's your brother. But that, I mean, my thing is that's your brother. If you get mad, he gonna get mad. But right. That's your brother. That don't mean he's gonna stop talking to you. True. You said the kid might be bad. <laughs> no, no, I said no, no not you, Bobby. Oh, oh, yeah. I said the kid. I said the kid might be bad. Now when the kid come around. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. All right. Well, hopefully that answers your question. All right. This one didn't have a name, but it said "Dear Larry." My white middle class family just moved into the ghetto. What advice do you have for us? That's literally what What? it says. (laughs) What? Yep. It says, Dear Lyric, my my white middle class family just moved into the ghetto. What advice do you have for us? Don't be a Karen. Okay. That's one. (laughs) Bobby. Well, if you're in the ghetto, are you really middle class? Like, exactly. That's the first thing. <laughs> there you go. So why are we moving our middle class asses to the hood? Exactly. <clears throat> but, well, I mean, hey, probably they <laughs> fell in the hardship. And they can only afford to live in the ghetto. <laughs> do better. <laughs> do better. Exactly. Yep. Sucks to be you. Keep your eyes low, mind your business, and don't be doing no nothing stupid. Oh, and lock your doors. Lock your damn doors, too. All right. Yes, uh, you said you got another one, Tigger? Yeah, I got another one. Go ahead. Okay. Uh oh. Mm. Oh, Grover, where you at? Oh, hold on. My, my dog about to start tripping. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Now Ralph, right. Ralph chiming in. Oh Lord! Now he got shit to say. Uh. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna take over. Yeah, do mine. yours. Start yours. Okay, dear Lyric. My recently divorced best friend of 12 years 
told me that her ex-husband gave her an incurable STI. I want to show her support and be there for her, but I'm at a crossroads of how to approach it. Part of me wants to dote on her and make, her, make sure she's okay, since it's something that she has to live with forever. But I'd rather just make light of it like we do all the other bullshit we go through. Do you have any advice on a good way to show my care and genuine love for her without being overbearing or insensitive? Thanks, Pam. Hmm. So, incurable STD. Don't want to be overbearing like, oh, girl, I'm so, so sorry. Your life is over. But then also don't want to be like, oh, well, you know what, girl? I mean, at the end of the day, put some Neosporin on it and keep it moving. Like, I mean, you know. <laughs> so. Oh, my God. <laughs> so that being said, what advice do we have for her? I, uh, why are you looking at okay you know what if it were me, you know how I deal with things I make jokes about everything hell at that point I feel like we could have a, a, a playful thing to where when like if it's herpes for example like you when you're going through your outbreaks and stuff and like the nigga that gave it to you his name is James you'd be like bitch my James is, is acting up and we just have a running joke girl how you James is like you know like we could have that banter back and forth just to you know lighten the load of what life is and keep it moving because like you did say it is forever she ain't gonna get rid of it as of yet modern medicine has not come up with a cure for whatever STI that this uh, woman has but at the same time, I mean, it is what it is. She has to live with it. And you being that friend, I mean, it's part of your responsibility to be that support system for your friend when they're going through a difficult time. I couldn't think of anything better than to have someone I did trust and that could make light of a situation that I was going through with this kind of magnitude. So that's how I feel. But that's just me. Well, all righty. Mm-hmm. I think I think there has to be a balance though. Like you can't you can't just be joking all the time. Right. I'm sure, like there's moments where you know she's gonna need that you know somebody little the shoulder to lean on. Mm-hmm. So I think having that being able to have that those jokes when it's needed, right. um, but also letting her know like, hey, I'm gonna here for you if you really need a shoulder to cry on. Right. Also, right. Um, but I was, one of the things I, I was I used to say is when I started saying is like you know we all we would tell people I'm here for you if you need me. Mm-hmm. And most times when people are right. going through stuff, they don't call people and be like, oh, I need you right now. So I think like just having those moments to show up instead of saying if you need me, I'm here. But like, hey, I'm here because I know you need. Me. Right. Right. Um. So just taking that moment to just to be there, just to support her, even if she's not asking for it. If that makes sense. Oh. See, we have oh, a nice. That makes, that, makes perfect, that makes perfect sense. We have a nice person Sometimes to balance they, me out. They, they, they really don't show up. Anymore, so, right. yeah. Isn't that nice, Tigger? I got like a nice person on, you know, to like balance me out since Lyric ain't here. You know, I, I, I usually give ratchet and horrible advice, but, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. What? So, so what am I? Uh, ratchet. <laughs> er. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hold on. Wait a minute. <laughs> you just ratchet with a complex. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's your last letter? All right. This is from Christina. All righty. She says, "Dear Lyric, mm-hmm. I'm an older woman. Oh, My husband okay. and I have been married eight years, but but we're together 15 years prior to our marriage." He is a wonderful, caring man in most ways, but from time to time, he snaps extremely unflattering photos. Oh, he snaps extremely unflattering photos of me, sends them to everyone we know, even orders enlargements made for... I'm sorry, my dog tripped me. You said orders (laughs) enlargements? My dog keeps trying to jump on me. I'm sorry. This is ridiculous. Okay, so basically... Her husband, um, he snaps unflattering photos of her mm-hmm. and then sends them to everybody. And sometimes he makes enlargements of them. <laughs> I have a, hold on, she goes, I have a mouth condition that <laughs> makes smiling painful. <laughs> so, <laughs> unless I got <laughs> Can I get this reading? <laughs> Can I get this reading? Hold on. She said, no, hold on. I have a mouth condition that makes smiling painful, so unless I know a picture's being taken 
I look really old and grumpy. Oh. I have asked them, please, not to do this because it's humili- humiliating when he sends them out to friends and family members. I think it's unkind and disrespectful and have told him so yet many times. I'm to the point that this has become a deal breaker in our marriage and he knows it. He claims he loves me and he is proud of me. And yes, we have been to counseling about our relationship in general because of the many times he has humili- humiliated me in public. Oh. But he won't stop. How can I handle this going forward? <laughs> okay, so Bobby, is it it wasn't picking up your mic uh, on the actual audio, but I heard you saying uh, sorry to somebody. <laughs> you okay? No, I'm not saying sorry to Crystal. Y'all laughing at this woman with her mouth condition. Uh, and I'm sure that's traumatizing for her. So I, I just want her to know that I am not a part of this group. And, and oh, <laughs> nope. Oh. Definitely not. I only started laughing because of Mark. I don't think it was laughing. I knew it was No, it's all, it's all in fun, Crystal. <laughs> it is all in fun. But when you said, I got a mouth condition, and then he... Okay, so unflattering photos, first and foremost. When posting things online, and I mean, I guess we can get into this a little bit later because I want to elaborate on it a little bit further, but, you know, we live in an age of where everything that you post online is there forever. And maybe somebody doesn't want unflattering shots of them posted all over the net, especially someone that you're married to. I mean, as much as many stunts and shows as the average person. Uh, what'd you say? And that has a condition. Yeah. And I mean, you know, so no, you no, don't. He, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I mean, it, it's true. I mean, if you are a person, like for example, if you had a stroke, and you know, people were running around snapping picture of you, and you got mm-hmm. like half of your face is like you know linked over to the side, and then you know, in pictures, you don't want the world seeing that. So. Right. And I, shit, I mean, I totally agree that that is a deal breaker. If you are constantly putting me in a situation to where I look like I'm embarrassed around my friends and family, those that are near and dear to us, and I've asked you to stop and your choice is to continue to do so. Why? Yeah, that's a problem. Girl, leave him. How about that, Chris? <laughs> Leave him. Girl, pack up. He's trying to make fun of me. <laughs> Girl, pack up your purse. What I think is like, okay, we know you. Now everyone knows you have this mouth condition, right? But embrace it. Like it is what it is. The mouth condition ain't going anywhere. Like. I'm not gonna say you know not not to be sensitive about it because we all have insecurities we all deal with we do all the things that we deal with that bother us and that's you know 100 percent understandable. So my advice to her is take someone flattering and picture of him. Oh, but everyone that he but there you go. There you go. Come on, there you go. Like Michelle said, when they go low, we gonna go just oh, low. Mm. Okay, she said. No, she said I go high. <laughs> I don't know that. I don't know that. <laughs> 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 I mean, like I said, I mean, my advice, like I said, girl, leave him. Pack your bags, get your disability check, and, you know. You know what? See me. Pump out. See, see, you didn't take it somewhere else. I did not. You know you wrong. I didn't. You know you wrong. <laughs> Again, uh, you know you wrong. Michelle, not Michelle, what's the Crystal. Crystal, I'm Crystal, I'm so sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm so sorry. We still love you and appreciate you uh, supporting us. We see you seeing us, and yeah, girl, thrive or something. You know you're gonna get you gonna get some messages. Why? Yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> but that's because I'm not lyric. So, anyways, she will be back, and when she is, please send your emails to her. But until then, send them to wrtrradio at gmail and we'll be right back. Homophobic men will forever be the funniest demographic in the world. They be extra worried about gay dudes just being in the proximity. I don't want none of them at the hospital, at the club, at the at the at the job. They just be like, oh, I don't need none of these gay dudes to try to talk to me. Nigga, the girls don't even be trying to talk to you. What are you talking about? It's always the dude that can barely get a woman's attention that be worried about getting attention from both sexes. You ain't gotta worry about neither, boy. 
You go out Saturday night and talk to 18 different girls. Got three numbers out of the 18. Two of them gave you the wrong number and one of them ghosted you after the first day. You can barely get the attention of the demographic of human that you want to get. Don't worry about the other one, bro. You straight. You safe. You are safe as fuck. Well, what if a gay dude try to give you a compliment? I'm going to accept the compliment. I need all my compliments. I ain't going to look like this forever. Come on now. But what if he really trying to get your number on some flirty shit? I'm going to let him know I'm straight and say no. And if that's that big of a deal for you, then that just makes it seem like you just really want to say yes. <laughs> you know what? I'm not going to call anybody out in particular this week. See, that's progress for me, Tigger Man. I'm proud of you. See? But that means you're not going to do it. Oh, well, I didn't say that. But... E eventually, eventually it's going to come out. <laughs> uh, I mean, okay. So, I was scrolling through the timeline, and one thing I cannot stand, and I posted this, and I said one thing I cannot stand is a, I can separate the art from the artist <clears throat> type of mofo. Stop it. Ugh! That irritates I know that ain't who I think that is. It's a whole lot of people, actually. It's nobody in particular, but, I mean, if you want to shout them out, yeah. we'll read them, too. Baltimore? Mm-hmm. It's a whole bunch of people out here. <laughs> and, but you know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. <laughs> and it'd be people that be trying to, like, what's your whole take on that, Bobby? Separating uh, the art from the artist. I think it kind of goes hand in hand. So, like, you, you can't really separate them. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, like no matter what that person does, like they're still that person. Okay. Exactly. Um, and it, it's hard because you know, like you know, I don't know if you're talking about certain people like R. Kelly or somebody yeah. in particular. Like, yes, they did do great, you know, great music and put that out into the world, but they also put that negativity out into the world also. Exactly. So, like, we're gonna take the good, we gotta take the bad as well. We can't be like, oh no, but I ain't gonna accept this. Hmm. Right. Well, I mean, some people like Nephibus on uh, Instagram said, I wish I could, but once an artist is an a-hole, I'm not putting any of my hard-earned money into their pockets. And I totally agree with it. I mean, you know, because at the end of the day, people are sitting here and I just, <clears throat> it's just weird fascination with people and this R. Kelly thing and mm -hmm. how they want to take the stance that, okay, yeah, He's, uh, you know, he did this heinous thing, or maybe he did, maybe he didn't. People kind of want to toe the line on it, and that's what irritates me about it, because it's like, okay, regardless if he, you know, regardless to the parameters of what he did, he still did this to an underage person. He's still a perv. Gross. Like, are we not seeing that? Do you disagree? Like, what are we doing? No, what he did was totally wrong. Mm. And I died me, I dislike him as a person. Okay. But music wise, I still like his music. I do I really do still like his music. But sometimes it make me think these songs he created, were they for them little girls? Exactly. Well, I, mean, I don't know. I don't know, but still, I like the music. I like his music. Mm hmm Even though I don't like him as a person. Okay. You you say were they for the little girls? He literally wrote a song for Aaliyah called "Age Ain't Nothing But a Number." There you go. Well, well, <laughs> I'm talking. I mean, look, he wrote a lot of songs. He wrote a lot of songs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'm just saying. <laughs> well, that I mean, hey, that is true. That's true. But like that, the person you say was what else from Twitter that comment about uh if an artist is nasty or whatever mm -hmm. or rude. Mm -hmm. With that, I think that that's kind of like that person's perspective. What are we considering as rude? Because if, like, let's like say for example, you know the um, the scenario I told you guys about when I was leaving out of Walgreens, the guy was like, "Do the voice." In that moment, he probably thought I was rude as hell because I didn't want to do a, a voice of a character off the of TikTok. Right, and you so just trying to get your. Play. I don't like him because he was rude to me. Yeah. Right, you so sitting there spending your time in your grocery freez freezer, and here come this mofo with uh, <laughs> one stunts and shows. Like, like, I'm trying to find me some ground turkey. Leave me alone. Right. You but know, no, I, see, now you're being rude. Now you're being rude. <laughs> 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 Look, I'm trying to get out of the I'm trying to get out of the I'm trying to swipe out the key card without being rude. I know that's um, right. <laughs> but no, no, I, I, I know that's right. Like in, in scenarios like that, people have to keep in mind that these artists are still human beings. Human beings, so yeah. So just like you wake up, you have a bad day. They may be having a bad day. You may catch them at that very bad moment. 
So it's like, mm. if you have that same attitude with a person, does that mean that you're a horrible person? Mm. But right. if you meet an artist one time, true? or now if you meet them like three, four, five, six, seven times, and they're that, and they're doing the same thing, time, yeah. that's a different story. That's a problem. That's a problem. Mm. Mm-mm. So. Uh, one problem. of the comments on the post online, Don Wallace said, "Oh wait, did I say your name? Oh, I'm so sorry. I hope your fifis aren't hurt." He said, "I have no right to judge. We never read the files for Mister Mister Kelly or any court documents. It was just what the media told people to say about him. Our own people did everything but say string him up." At a public lynching, let's go with other Michael Jackson. Okay, y'all. I'm sorry. These comments are not filtered, so I'm reading what you're typing I'm, in real time and trying I'm, to make sense out of it when it comes out of my mouth. So <clears throat> let's go with other there Michael Jackson. Girls Jack- that came forward. It, there was, it was girls that came forward. There was also a document about him oh. and the league up. It, um. Yeah, there was video. Videos. <laughs> what you, right. What are you talking about? <laughs> y'all remember that episode that Boondocks did where? Uh, where R. Kelly was peeing on the girl right there in the courtroom, and people was like... <laughs> no, I did not see that. <laughs> All right, so he said also, he said, let's go with the others. Michael Jackson, when they did him, when they did them raids on his house, our then current president was on a world tour, and boo in every country he went to, but was told by our media MJ was the worst when, in fact, he was the best. I respect your choice. Just don't agree with the media being the source for facts. So if media is not going to be the source for facts, are we then expecting a reality show of what goes on in Mr. Kelly's bedroom? Or, like, I mean, what? What are we talking here? I think people people pick and choose what they want to believe on the internet. Yes. It's like, in this scenario, okay, you want to support him, so it's like, oh, I don't believe the internet, but like tomorrow may come and somebody is something different, and you'll believe that 100% wholeheartedly. Exactly. So it's like, it's crazy. And I'm, but I think, like, with R. Kelly, you know, like, they had the whole uh, Surviving R. Kelly documentary. Yeah. Right. And, like, after watching that, I'm like, okay, I understand people lie. Yeah, people lie. But if you have that many people telling pretty much well, the same that, that, story... That, Right, Man, like there has to be some truth within there. Exactly, and I'm. But over- there was a video tape. <laughs> <laughs> really but, see, okay, but, 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 but that one, but that one, it was kind of like, okay, was she underage? Did she look just look underage? Was it really him? Her, 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 her brother, her aunt, or who? Her aunt said it was her, and she was underage. Hmm. But then everybody might be like, she trying to get money, and she lying. So it's like it's always something. <laughs> it's always something. It's, it's always, always something. something. It's always okay. So that, this goes back to the Aaliyah thing. Mm-hmm. Was that a lie? And it was a document. It's there was a marriage document, and it got annulled or whatever. It was, it was forged. Um, there we go. See, see. I see. mean, but that's, that's how that's, people. That's how people are. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. Yeah. It literally is how people are acting, and everybody. It's just this legion of uh, like the R. Kelly's, the like Bill Cosby's. The, the Bill Cosby's, and also this whole thing going on with um, Lizzo now. She yeah. Three dancers who accused her of yeah. uh, um, her forcing them to do um, harass, sexually harass them or whatever. Exactly, and it's like, I, I get it. Like, I get that they're your hero, but, like, sorry, girl, you got a face that your hero might be a little bit of a douchebag. So <clears throat> it just is what it is. People are well, you know, allowed to be people, but, yeah. But they got, she says she, they got fired because they was, they, um, was doing whatever mm-hmm. I don't know whatever it was, but they got. But I think there, I think it kind of goes deeper, like within the black community, because uh, for the people that are you know still supporting R. Kelly, still supporting uh, Bill Cosby, and I don't, I don't know the whole story with Lizzo, but within the black community, there are so many people that don't come forward and say that they were raped or molested by you know family members or just people in general because that's how they're going to get treated. Oh, that's not true. Oh, we love. We love Uncle Jojo. Uncle Jojo won't do But no, when somebody when somebody finally comes forward, then those other ones then are, oh yeah. We were harassed and yeah. sexually abused or whatever too. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, there you have that. Um, let's see, what else did I want to get into on the internet? Uh, oh, did y'all hear about that Georgia man? Since uh, you know, Bobby liked to be in Georgia a lot. <laughs> <laughs> 
I went to Atlanta. I didn't go to Georgia. <laughs> ah, that's true. That is true. That is true. But did y'all hear about the man yeah. though, the black man that uh he got caught Why basically. Black, oh wow. Huh. <laughs> Listen, he he apologize. He tries to uh, be a cop. Or he applies to be a, a cop despite oh, having a warrant yes. out for and his And he got life. arrested because he had warrants yep. somewhere around him. I heard. Yeah, okay. Okay, yes. It was yes. funny as hell because, like, they the way they did him, they did him real dirty, right? So they let him apply. He goes in to the precinct and everything. And he was, you know, he had to meet up in Georgia for his physical test and everything. So that's when they make you, you know, do the obstacles and all that shit. Like, they made him go through all the physical stuff and then they arrested him. <laughs> Best shit I've seen all week. How old was he? And he dumb. He no, he had he, warrants out for him. Twenty four. He was twenty four. Uh, that was dumb. That was real dumb. Yeah, <laughs> real dumb. Monticello Police Department. Oh no, this. Was, <laughs> actually, so he was in. The, hold on, this is Georgia man. Okay, so he didn't do this in Georgia. He actually, he's from Georgia. So let's clear that up. He's Georgia. He applied. For to be a cop in Arkansas, so huh, that's still close to you, isn't it? Be <laughs> okay. So let's keep this train moving. Up next is my dip for that segment. Florida, what the hell is this? Parents of black students in the fourth and fifth grades at Bunnell Elementary in Flagler County are upset, saying their children were targeted for underperforming on standardized tests. West News Claire Metz reports only black students, whether they were low scoring or not, were called into the assembly on Friday. Two races were divided, white and black. The mother of a Bunnell Elementary School fifth grader asked us not to identify her, but she says hers is a story that needs to be heard. He left the white children in the classroom to continue education, and the black children had to go out to be taught about um, the consequences of not being successful. Staff at the school called all black children in fourth and fifth grades to an assembly in the cafeteria, where they presented this PowerPoint the district shared with us. This page is called The Problem, AA African Americans have underperformed on standardized assessment for the last past three years. Only 32% are at level three or higher. Her daughter told mom, They want our grades to be higher. And they said if we get a higher grade, then we will be rewarded with McDonald's or Chick-fil-A. In addition, this parent and others we spoke to off camera said staff running the assembly made these alarming comments to the children. If they're not successful when they're older, you know, they can end up being killed or go to jail. The parents say they were not told anything about the plan to single out students of color as though they and only they are what's bringing the school down. The mother we spoke to on camera says her daughter scored four and five on recent assessments. It became racial for me when they included and boxed all of the black children together, no matter if they were um, below average, average, or above average. And she says several of the higher performing black students, including her child, were called out. She felt embarrassed because she had to go on stage. She had to go on stage and made it seem like she was better than them. School District Interim Superintendent Lashaki and Moore released a statement that says in part, while there was no malice intended, how this particular outreach was done does not meet expectations. She went on to say there are more appropriate ways to affect change. So predominantly white school decides to take black children from fourth and fifth grade, put them in assembly and basically tell them that they're the reason why the school isn't getting good test scores and that if they don't approve on their test scores, they can go to jail when they grow up or be unalived. Make that shit make sense. And the crazy part is it didn't matter what your test scores were. They pulled all the black and brown children. So the white kids whose test scores were low didn't get pulled into this assembly. Really fucking weird. And here's the principal is out here trying to act like she didn't know what the fuck was happening but forgot that she posted this shit on Twitter. And there you go. And then they use black teachers to do this shit. Like, who's homie in the pink doing this shit? Why didn't they complain about this crap? I understand a job is a job, but I think they should have said, hey, this might not look good. That you're just pulling black kids, no matter their test scores, to tell them that if they don't get better test scores, they're going to end up in jail. 
this is where we at in Florida. I swear to God, whoever's dumb idea this was better get fucking fired. The fuck? Dead for that. Time to find out what Marcus is dead for. One of the things that I'm dead for this week, and I'm finding out that I'm increasingly dead for, is porn. So, like, just like the whole por- what? Why are oh, you looking wait, at me wait, like that? Wait, a, I'm sorry. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> You dead for what? Porn. I oh, just I'm over go the story. Go, go ahead and tell us why. Okay. Go ahead. I, I want to hear this. I need to hear it. I'm over the storylines. I'm over the weird, like uh, the sexting, the nudes phenomena of people, like, you know, all of it. I'm just I'm over porn. Just like if you want to get some, go out and, you know, co mingle with people and about, get some. I mean when you watch it. No. Tell me. No, I want to know. <laughs> Tell me, when you watch porn, then what? You were about to say Hey, maybe, may, hey, maybe, I'm, maybe I want to pleasure myself. I mean... <laughs> but, okay, Some so how... Get, get off on it. It ain't all about, oh, let me watch this so I can go out and, so I can go out and have sex with somebody like that. Maybe you want to pleasure, pleasure yourself. But some people just like watching it just to be watching it. Why does it have storylines? Why? Well, that's how it's, hey, that's how it actually started off with storylines. But okay, I get the whole erotic but it's storytelling, not, but I don't get it in porn. A lot of, a lot of it ain't. A lot of it's not storylines anymore. It's oh no, porn. it is. It's, it's, porn. Porn. it's no. You know what, 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 most of the old ones are, but now they just get into it. They so, still got ones I, now. I they, they still do. Yeah, they still do ones now, but those are the ones you got to pay for, like those, exactly. those streaming ones. Exactly. Oh, and that's another thing. So the whole OnlyFans thing, I know you joke about it all the time, Tigger, but like the OnlyFans thing, what? Uh, how do you know I joke about it? Well, uh, gross. If you're not. Exactly. But exactly. Anyway. But anyway. Hey, you know what? Yeah, I, make, I gotta make some money on the side. Okay. That's extra money. Okay, that's so that money. being said, that being said, even with that whole OnlyFans <laughs> situation... <laughs> For people that have OnlyFans, it's just... Okay, so I don't understand the whole fascination thing of where I guess you tip them and then it sends off like a buzz or something like for women. Like they're on their, you know, spread eagle and then you hit the little tip button and then that sends a no, signal. Uh, it's, not a, it's not a tip button. You, you subscribe to... I'm talking their, about the people that oh, will watch it and where it's like live action and like you sitting there like interacting with them or whatever and then they'll be like oh. okay so you I guess you give them requests of things that you want done and then you hit the button and then they I, I just I don't get the fascination it's just a fascination it. it's a fascination but what the it is a fa- well, well I'm, I'm a Christian and I don't really know uh, much about you, you know what goodbye well, goodbye well, goodbye well, goodbye well, <laughs> Uh, it's, it's just like people want to, you know, be entertainers, and they make their videos and their content recorded. Exactly. And put it online. But it's so it bad. It's, it's, it's very bad. It's, it's so it's bad. bad. Then, my thing is, some of them some are Some people's very TikTok videos are bad. Boring. Some people, yeah, but we don't have to pay for that, though. <laughs> exactly. I mean, hey. <laughs> well, you know what? Those people that pay for it must... Like those bad <laughs> live acts. Like you don't get to do, you don't get like a, a preview most of the time. Well, sometimes I guess like they put it on Twitter and stuff like that. Because I watch a lot of videos. Yeah, on yeah. But for some of them, it's like okay, I see you got one or two videos that are good. If I go to your OF page, and, and then the rest I of them is just like what the hell? Fresh, or it's the same thing every time. I, that like, happened Ooh. to me. I, I've seen that before too. You I've said that happened to you. Like, that was a Freudian slip. No, no, that happened to me. Mm-hmm. But meaning, I went on someone's and looked and was like, "What the hell? No. Did I just pay for this?" No. Yeah. 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 Okay. I mean, it's it's all just weird to me. I mean, like all of that, like the, and then you have the um the it be the very mofos with the biggest. Like, oh, well, I'm thorough. I'm this, that, and the third. They be sitting there watching dudes fucking... Like, you sitting there watching the dick, going to the woman. Your concentration is on the dick. It's not on the pussy. Like, you sitting there, then you watching this nigga's balloon knot. You sitting here watching this nigga's balloon knot sit there, bounce back and forth in the goddamn screen. Then it's not realistic because a lot of stuff happens. People fart. People paint. People squirt. People, like, all of these things that happen in a real life sex does not happen in porn. Where are these people getting this industrial strength stuff? No, no, no. Actually, it does for the people that 
actually like watching that, there are some yeah, some, people, yeah, some people that do you that. Search whatever yeah. that you're looking for. Search, what? It's on there. If you like, yes. if you like that stuff, that is, it's that on there. It is on there. there. Thank it's you for proving there. my point that it is just gross. It's on there. All of but it. But some people are fascinated with that. You know what? Some people are fascinated with watching. So what is, is your issue the sex or is it that they're recording themselves having the sex? All of it is just bad. Like, and then you got the gay for pay people. Like, where they sitting there, they looking god awful miserable. I swear, these these West Virginians. Whatever. Anyways, <laughs> what I'm these saying West is Virginians. that <laughs> what I'm saying is that you have these people that are on there, and it just like the people look miserable. First off, I don't want to watch anything that it just looks like you like niggas sitting there getting head and they closing their eyes because it's wishing they want you know he wishing it's a woman and all this other stuff. Like who wants to pay what? for that? Who wants to pay for that? Who? You may not want to, but there are people out there that do want oh, to. That's just okay. But I think within the in the gay community is this fascination with DL and getting the DL guy. And that's what like guys enjoy looking at that. Oh my god. Oh, that's so cool. There you have it. And that is so that's, just uh, that's something I can't even get into. That's a therapy either. session that's needed. Very much so. I agree. Alright. I cannot. <laughs> I cannot. Oh, you like you like looking at those? Oh. <laughs> oh. Now All right. he coming for you. Now he coming for <laughs> you. <laughs> oh, no. No. Again, I'm a Christian. You, know, you got one more time. Mm. You got one more time, and I'm going to remove you. Already. I'm about to remove you already. I don't condone that stuff. I'm about to remove you already. <laughs> Oh, uh-huh. and then this bad <laughs> porn just inspiring all these bad lyrics and songs lately. Everybody want to run to the internet and tell uh, a screen and hit record and go how they pussy is pink and they booty hole is brown. Like everybody can't run. Downtown. They can't wait to run to the internet to tell everybody that they booty hole brown. And I just do not understand any of that either. Dead for Downtown. that too. Oh, well. You know what I, what, what I don't get is like, why does everybody want to do porn right now? Right. Like there's there's no mystery, there's no excitement. Like if you there's, there's a guy that I think he's from Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, like he'll make posts on Twitter about wanting to be in a relationship and how uh, that that's that's what he really wants. But then the next post mm. is him with his dick out, talking about like that he's chilling outside. And then there's other posts. And, Pump day pose to his booty hole. Oh no, wild. baby, baby. <laughs> oh no. Like, you putting yourself out there like that, but yet at the same time you want somebody. To hey, that's what they do. You. They, hey, that's what they do. Uh, that's what okay. they do. That is what they do. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess it's about that time that we head into the second half of the show. We'll be right back after this. So I keep seeing Republicans say that if Donald Trump is convicted in the cases against him, he shouldn't go to jail. Like, no, he shouldn't sit in a prison cell. He should go to Mar-a-Lago, be placed on house arrest, and live out the rest of his life. My response to that? Absolutely not. If Donald Trump is convicted, he should go to prison for however long the sentence is. He should be treated like anybody else. And to the Republicans that disagree, let me ask you this. What about the African-Americans who have sat in jail for years on petty drug possession crimes? What about the women who are now being criminalized in Republican states because they get abortions and the procedure has been banned almost outright in these states? What about the mother who stole food from a local store because she didn't have enough money to feed her kids and then she's sitting in jail for years? Those people should spend more time in prison than Donald Trump, who's being accused of falsifying business records, stealing our nation's highest secrets and classified documents, and entering into a criminal conspiracy to defraud the United States? Those people sit in jail for longer than Donald Trump? No, we have an equal system of justice in this country. And just because Donald Trump was a former president doesn't mean he gets to live out a lavish life for committing the crimes he's done. No. Take us to work. Take us on the go. Take us wherever you go. WRTR Real Talk Radio. We are everywhere that you are. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, WRTR Real Talk Radio. Just look for us. Our guest hosting with us today is Bobby Jarrell from TikTok. What it do? Hello, everyone. Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it so much. We appreciate you. Enjoying the conversation. And he's a Christian. 
Oh. Good old wholesome young man. Oh. Not for the streets. Yep, guest hosting in for the lyric is Bobby Jarrell. So, Bobby is a TikTok creator. And so, what are some of the things that you like? What do you do? in your personal life like if you i don't you know i'm not saying hey i work at mcdonald's or something like that but just like give us a idea of who you are as a person oh i like outside of tiktok i am a board certified behavior analyst okay. um mm. uh what that means is uh, i can with, you can see it i can go ahead i'm listening <laughs> uh so i like i primarily <laughs> work with individuals with autism um and I also do like life coaching. Um, so like my life coaching business is behavioral coaching solution. So it's like helping people that are working towards goals and teaching them how to look at it like from a behavioral aspect. Um, just for an example, like, you know, sometimes we create goals for ourselves that are, they're obtainable, but we have to make those small steps. And a lot of times people fail at making um, those, you know, sustainable steps towards their goal. Because mm-hmm. they don't know how to break them down into more smaller, achievable steps. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's what I do with life coaching. And I've seen anything from, um, I've been working with my mother right now to reduce her smoking habit. Um, or, or like a lady that we're trying to lose weight. So just working with her and how to figure how to figure that out. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's just things that like with uh, an applied behavior analysis, it's primarily with kids with autism, but it's things that we do on a daily basis in our lives. Um, so just like giving people those tools and skills they need to be pro- prosperous in their own life. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> and I don't just do this. Uh, like I don't just wake up one day and say, "Hey, I'm, this is what I'm going to do." Like I have a master's degree, right? Uh, which is in special education with a focus in applied behavior analysis. I have a bachelor's in sociology with a minor in psychology. So I have a little bit of education <laughs> outside of TikTok. Outside of the TikTok. All right. right. That's cool. That is cool. Very so, cool. So I think you need to um work with um marcus in regards okay. to edible ha- habits mm. do you he has an issue with um, edibles oh but do you just say you the one that- <laughs> <laughs> hey you the one sitting here munching like chewing like a cow like what are you talking about well, I, wasn't, I wasn't gonna say anything like a minute ago like he popped up in his mouth I'm like you thinking another edible no, no 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 that was not an edible see mm. oh, okay okay no, it's a fruit snack. <laughs> Nigga. Don't let him fool you, Bobby. He be trying to pass edibles off as Cheetos and shit. <laughs> no judgment here. No judgment here. I'm a Christian, though, but I don't partake in that stuff. Oh, speaking of Tigga Man, how was your week, sir? How was everything since our last show? Um, no. But you know I stay booked and busy, so. Oh. My only fans? Went through a lot of events. That, too. Mm. And then, of course, you know about today. I've been in the, sitting in the hospital all day today. Mm-hmm. Um, sitting with my sister because she had to get surgery. So mm. I was in there all day with her. Yeah. So when I got home, I was tired. I had to take a nap. I feel you. I was thinking about you earlier this week because uh, a story came up about that Virginia teacher that was shot in the face by the six-year-old. You heard about that? Uh, that was uh-uh. earlier in the year. It was a uh, um, shit. I forget where out in Virginia, but um, it was a teacher. Um, six-year-old came to school, <laughs> locked and loaded, shot her in the face. What? Yeah. I did not hear that. I did so, not hear that. So the reason that it was in the news is because basically, um, you know, she didn't die. She survived and everything. But one of the issues is that they're denying her. <laughs> they're denying See, look, 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 look. <laughs> no, I'm not laughing at her getting shot. Let me no, be I'm clear. not talking about you. I'm talking about this other one. Oh. <laughs> it, 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 made, it made me think about the question from earlier. I was like, I wonder if that was that one. Uh-huh. You know what? You're wrong. See, look, you are wrong. <laughs> no, he just said it. He just said it earlier. Uh-huh. Crystal, like, is that you, girl? You know what? You know what? That is wrong. Uh, I wasn't making fun of that. Was Marcus? I I was not making fun of that. I I did not. You know I don't make fun. Mm. Okay. (laughs) So the issue, the reason that it came up in the news was because, like you know, she went and they were like they denied her, and they like compensation. They were saying it's just a hazard of the job. 
it's to be expected. Yeah, literally, it, they denied her insurance because they said that being a teacher, being a school teacher, being shot at is just a hazard of the job. This is 2023. But, that doesn't make sense. But they're still like elementary. The kids are six? Yes. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. Wow. Was it a black neighborhood? Uh, was she black? Uh, 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 but when I they get hired, they say, just to make you aware that you might get beat up by a student, you may get stabbed, you may get shot in the face by a student, like, but just know that we're not going to cover it. Yeah, but can we talk so, about, can we talk about, like, all of the things that they need? So, first off, I'm going to need a raise, because I'm going to need hazard pay. Not only am I going to need hazard pay, but then I'm going to need a bulletproof vest. I'm going to need some retaliation other than that little box of rocks that they were they putting they in uh, schools. They, huh? they, they don't cover that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. You, they, they said they don't cover it. <laughs> That's some bullshit. I thought that, that was the most heinous shit. So uh, you take this job at your own risk. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> other bullshit that white people did this week uh or oh, well this yeah since we last talked michael or or that story about the uh you know the black football the um black football player or the black athlete that was ad- supposedly adopted by the white people mm. way back in the day and they did their um <clears throat> so for those of you that don't know they put a concert like a vid what was it it was a movie that came out and I want to say the early 2000s of Michael Orr's his story. And basically it was about these benevolent white people that were just, they swooped in and helped this inner city youth, this black boy that would have never have been able to aspire for greatness if it weren't. For their white hands so they came to him when he was 18 he didn't have he was living in a homeless shelter and all that and they were like okay well you know come live with us yada 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 gave him a sheet of paper had him sign it and again i'm just giving you the abridged version had him sign it <sighs> then they're getting all of these of course the movie deal came out about his life uh these people had him sign the paper that meant that they get the rights, they get the money, they get everything to his story. Oh, that was the one with um, Sandra Bullock. Yeah. Yeah, Sandra Bullock. Exactly. Yeah. Why, 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 yep. So, and, you know, that was, um, so basically they stole this boy's money because they've been getting money all of this time. Now, this isn't a thing of like where they did it for three years and it was like, okay, from 18 to 21 while you're in college, while you're doing your thing, this, that, and the third, we're just going to hold this money for you because we want to make sure that you don't blow it on bullshit. It wasn't even like that. These white people literally went and stole money from this boy, stole his, like he got zero dollars, zero from the rights of from the movies made about him it's his story they got That's- everything he got nothing so that pissed well, me hold off on. didn't he no hold on what did he try to sue them or something? I thought I... He did. Like, right now, it's, you know, he's definitely, yeah. it's in the work. Legal is in the works. And I'm wondering if this whole thing with Britney Spears and how that's being sensationalized in the media now, I'm wondering if that oh, is yeah, what triggered it. And, like, he's like, oh, well, hold on. If it's happening to Britney, let me take a look at this paper real quick. You know what I'm saying? And that was, like, one of the things that came up. <sighs> Oh, what else? Um, Tiffany Haddish. Did you hear about her? Nope. Uh, we're seeing the news for again. All right. <laughs> no, no, she this didn't. Is about her, her, and her in common. No. Why they split up? Oh, nope. Okay. Not about her love life. Basically, oh, okay. uh, Tiffany Haddish is uh, <laughs> she's to start a documentary or to host a documentary on successful women dating homeless men. Yeah. So we here for it or not? No. Why? Not at all. Why not? I ain't got time for it. I ain't got time for it. <laughs> she ain't serious. She really at is. All. She really is. At like it, it's a documentary. But she dating a homeless, like, dating a homeless man now. I didn't say she was dating a homeless man. How she gonna She's... write a book about a successful women dating a home unless she witnessed another successful female dating? A homeless man. Well, that's what she's going to be doing. She's going to be hosting the documentary, so it's going to follow women. And I'm assuming oh, she's going to be the host. No, I, I'm, I'm sorry, I missed what you said. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. a documentary about women host. I'm sorry, it's a it's a documentary that she's hosting about women that successful women that are dating homeless men. 
and I'm not. I want to know what successful one is dating the homeless. Man. Exactly, That's I have all I these know. questions. I'm not <laughs> hating the storyline. <laughs> That's what I want to know. I want to see them. I want to see what they look like. Yeah, this, I I want to see. This is a this is a made up shit. That's what it yeah. is. Yeah. That's, that's, what like. it's not that's what it's going to be. Ain't no way in the world you're going to see a successful woman dating a homeless man. If she end up dating a homeless man, he not going to be homeless no more because she's going to fix him up. Exactly. He ain't going to be homeless. Well, I think that's part of the documentary. My whole thing is with Tiffany Haddish, I don't necessarily know don't that she I don't see that she would be the person to host this for me, like for me to even take it seriously. Like are you make I don't want her hosting I don't want her narrating it. That I don't. Well I mean she used to be homeless though. She used to live out of car. That's what I'm saying, but, but I don't want her narrating it because then I think it'll be a little bit more like comedic and this is these people's lives, you know what I'm saying? So I don't necessarily want that, but I don't know. I posted it online. Uh, somebody said if he lives with her, he isn't homeless. <clears throat> no one call a housewife homeless unless he is actually homeless, huh? I just said that. I just said that. Yeah. So your twin is quoting you on tag on uh, Instagram. A lot of people, when I posted it, a lot of people said that they weren't here for it, but I can't imagine that we all won't be glued in front of the TV. I know that I will at least to watch an episode. I'm not watching it. Sorry, I'm not watching Why? it. Why? You will watch I'm, porn, I'm just, but I'm you watching. won't watch this? I sure will. Okay. I sure will. Yeah. Because well, okay. that's, that's interesting to me. <laughs> mm. I, mm. Hello? <laughs> mm. Oh, shout out to Riri. You heard she had her baby. Did that she? Yes. All right, right now, forehead. Do your thing. Don't do that. That's my girl. Don't do that. I'm not. Don't, I love don't, her. To, don't, don't, I don't love her to life and back. Don't do that to her. That forehead, though. That's not cool. Mm-hmm. That is not cool. Not at all. All right. You what don't else? like people talk about her or Mariah. Don't okay. Hmm. Uh, let's see. Did you hear how Amazon is trying to get into shop uh, shipping medications to people? Yeah. So there's this big controversy about, you know, how Amazon now kind of wants to get into pharmaceuticals. So instead of you having to go to the grocery store, wait in line for those elderly people that may not have, you know, access to a vehicle and they need their medicines and stuff like that. Now, Uh, do you know what (laughs) those Amazon drivers, (laughs) if they know that some kind of medication in those boxes, you have those crook ones that, that steal those boxes. They'll put them at the doors, take a picture, mm-hmm. the, it's the show proof that they deliver, and then turn around and take the damn box to keep moving. Oh, well, I'm, I like you thought about this. I'm sure. They I do. know. They do. You, I mean, you've right. seen them on, if you ever seen those uh, ring cam videos, mm-hmm. some of them do it. Yeah. Some of them do it. Who pharmaceuticals is you eyeing? Which one of your neighbors? Oh, yeah. first of all, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> no, Miss uh-uh. Gertrude. No, I, I, no mm-hmm. I, I have a ring cam to watch my name. Miss <laughs> Gertrude, stay high. What's in that bottle? Like, I, what? I, 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 no, I, 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 look, look. <laughs> <laughs> look, I'm nosy. I like to see <laughs> not the high blood pressure. Yes, high blood pressure. Mm-mm. Bronchitis. <laughs> oh God! No, no. So I, I thought about this, and I was like, okay. So are we starting to be? Are we starting to sound like our parents when it comes to the AI advancements and all of this new shit? Because like, I heard. Okay, so I heard this online, and when I was reading through the comments, people were sitting there saying stuff like, "Oh, well, I don't trust it." People were saying stuff about, you know, "Oh, I don't want you know my medicine out there." They were talking about, um. You know, basically, people don't want, they don't want to, you know, just kind of like go towards the technological aspect of everything. They don't want things shipped. They want to be tangible. They want to be able to talk to their pharmacists. They want to do this, that, the third. Because they know what's going on. But are we now becoming that generation to where, like, we, you know, they didn't trust TVs back in the day. You know, think about all the stuff that was coming to age for us that our parents didn't necessarily trust or like. So I think you know we're kind well, of pivoting. So I feel that way with um. You feel that way with. Eight, you feel that way with the alphabet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> this shit obsolete. I don't like this. <laughs> Reading. Who needs that? <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm about to exit. <laughs> I'm about to exit. <laughs> uh, I can't take this right now. I'm about to exit. <laughs> well, while we let Tigger Man get out his pee pee, <laughs> we'll be right back to the Wild Files. My 28th birthday was last week, so here are 28 life lessons that I've learned so far. Therapy fucking works. Choosing your friends is just as important as choosing who to date or marry. Gratefulness is overrated. You don't have to be grateful for a shitty job or for the bare minimum from somebody capable of more. Your comfort zone will trap you. Sometimes you're not overthinking, it's your intuition. How someone treats people that are insignificant to them reveals their true character. As a teenager, it is likely that you won't know your true career path. Delaying or even skipping college might be a wise decision. There's no such thing as a hoe and being sexually adventurous is not the same thing as being irresponsible. How a potential partner treats you when they're angry is just as important as how they treat you when things are good. Even if you can't cook shit else, have at least three things that you can prepare successfully. Gucci's don't need much to remain clean. Store-bought products are an extra. Wash your brand new drawers before you wear them. Clothes too, but especially the underwear. If you have loving parents, there is no shame in living at home as an adult until you get completely established. It's okay to not like confrontation, but you have to know how to face it. If somebody has you fucked up, tell them. Credit cards are like quicksand. Tread lightly. Women are constantly pressured to conform to societal standards, so evaluate your choices to see if you're doing what's best for you or what's expected of you. Knowing how to be alone is essential for ending up in a good relationship. If you're pressed for a relationship, you're more likely to undersell yourself for companionship. If your doctor dismisses your concerns even one time, switch doctors. Experiment with your personal style. The worst you'll get is looks from people whose outfits you don't like either. Unconditional love is overrated. Someone being in your life should come with conditions. Being a girl's girl has value. A lot of the protection that I've gotten in my life was from other women. Comparison is truly a thief of joy and it's a waste of time. Your journey will never be anyone else's. Don't idolize old school relationships based on longevity. 40 years of misery is not better than divorcing somebody after five. Your early 20s is not too young to start worrying about your IRA. Women don't get any extra benefits for being soft, quiet, or ladylike. Society is just threatened by bold women. DNA does not bond you to somebody automatically. Sometimes you're not compatible with family either, and that's okay. Formal intelligence is valued in society, but it's not more important than common sense, social awareness, or wisdom. And number 28 is don't grocery shop when you're high. Why do you have roaches? The Why the why, 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 why do my children hate me? WRTR Real Talk Radio. Why do my vagina burn? The truth is out there. Explaining the unexplained. We're answering why to the questions you want to know by taking your tweets at WRTR Radio. We're taking your emails at WRTR Radio at gmail.com. And we're taking your Facebook messages at Facebook.com forward slash WRTR Real Talk Radio. This is the Y Files. Remember, the truth is out there. Tigger Man. You say you were ready. Mm -hmm. I did not. I said I was ready for oh, niggas. Okay. Let's come back on there. Okay. That's anyway. what I said. Well, then why I'll you got to be my? Why you got to be ignorant? How mm. about that? Well, why can't you communicate? Why can't you do your damn job? Oh, how about <laughs> that? <laughs> that? I didn't tell you why. Why? Because I was eating edible. Exactly. <laughs> But then I got high. <laughs> I was going to do the podcast, but I got high. That's why. <sighs> All right. So Willis All right, go. Willis from the Bronx wants to know, why is Drake out here looking like Vanessa Huxtable? So, you know what? I think that was, no, I think that was Photoshop. I, I saw that. I too believe with the, so. With the, the, with the pink gold red things and the, the net. Yeah, I, yeah, I saw that. Uh, I Drake, saw that. Drake? That, no, that was Photoshop. It was Photoshop. You could tell it was Photoshop, but at the same time, it was funny. And that ain't, like, Drake is, I'm going to say nice things. Cause, you know, no, go ahead and say what you gotta say. No, I was just this gonna talk radio. I mean, he just, you know, Drake looks a little peculiar to me sometimes. You know, you know, mm -hmm. he has a unique. What, what else you got? What else you gotta say? He has about? unique features. You know, he does. He has unique features. He he looks like a big toe. Um, <laughs> um what else? It, like the gown. hair. Beautiful gown. <laughs> 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 beautiful gown. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
he's a beautiful guy. I don't know. Drake is just goofy to me. Like, I guess I just, I can't take him serious because he sings all these, like, emotional songs. But then, I don't know, then he tries to be hard. And then he tries to be gangster. But then you see him at basketball games or football events. And he's all lit up, looking like them goddamn kids you know when they go to the amusement park and they see motherfucking bugs bunny or the kids that what the kids at the make a wish oh, foundation like, we, we want to hear we want to hear like when he's at the basketball games and he's lit up and he's like i feel like in his mind he's thinking i want to be in the middle of a circle jerk oh everybody on court that's what i get oh from his excitement like he's mm. That's what I get from him. Like, make me your... Uh, oh! Run that, tra- run that train. Oh! Uh, what's another thing you have? Oh! Oh! What's a little... Okay. That's just... That's what I get from him. Okay. Oh? I mean, what's a little mid-court... Oh. What's a little mid-court bukkake between bukkake. celebrities? That's what I knew you was about to say. So, I mean... It just is what it is, I guess. Oh. Okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that boy. Leave him alone. Okay. He ain't, he ain't did nothing to y'all. Mm. Okay. My second hey, hey, wife. You're supposed to be Christian. Okay. I am. I am very much so. Lord, it's kind of like it is. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. Why? <laughs> because the truth is out there. All right. So the next yeah. one comes from me. I want to know why is it that I go to an office every day. And I work with the grown people. I'm not like Mr. Jarrell here and I'm uh, working with children. Because then I could almost kind of understand it. I couldn't really. But I don't understand working with adults, going into an office to where things are closed. And, you you know, everybody's kind of breathing the same air. And you can kind of smell everybody. There's just different mm-hmm. smells and stuff, you know? Mm-hmm. I want to know why it is that I work about a bunch of adults that don't know how to take their clothes from the washer to the dryer in the amount of time that is required for them not to spoil and then stink up the goddamn office that we got to sit in all goddamn day. Why? Why is this? Why, adults? Well, yes. You work with different different nationalities, right? I work with Caucasians and a whole bunch of difference. Yeah, you're right. Mm Mm-hmm. One. Uh huh. Caucasian. No, no. Let me keep my no. No, no, no. <laughs> I want to know, cause you get down on me all the time. So I want to know what uh, wisdom well, you have. Well, first of all, how you know it's their clothes and just and it's just not their body? Because I don't. Uh, I know the smell. You know the smell of spoiled laundry. Yeah. You do. Well, yeah. It has yeah. a very distinct. They smell. allowed it. I uh, left. Uh, uh, basically, we know, like, well, they I'm left their clothes in the. In the um, washing machine, right? Check them out, right? But I think like some people are either they using like cheap detergent, that too, things like that, or not enough detergent, mm-hmm. and I feel like that also adds to that that smell. Oh but no! Like there's, there's one person I'm going to say the name on here, but uh, I, I refuse to use their towels because their towels always smell like that. Oh, but I think no. it's like they're just not using enough detergent. Oh, yeah. but but again, that's like, listen, and you know, for, for those people, if you want to send them my way with behavioral coaching solutions, you go. we do work on those uh, life skills, the daily living skills, and we can teach them how to do those things. You better properly. promote. You yeah. better yeah. promote. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you can reach me at jbrown.com. <laughs> uh, yep. That's right. You better promote. <laughs> Definitely. And if maybe you don't have the financial means to do so, there's always a list of instructions on each washer and dryer that tells you how it operates and how it works. But, you know, from what we've seen tonight, some people do struggle with reading. So that may Ah, be... No! Listen, listen. First of all, (laughs) I know you're talking about me. Hold on. Oh. The only... Because y'all been coming for me. Both of y'all been coming for me. Mm. Did I don't, listen? I don't. That it's that edible. edible. That's so that so I don't normally struggle with the breathing. Mm. It's just okay. when 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 I get when I have an edible, then oh, I get a little, you know. Okay. <laughs> you know. 
Okay, take a look. It's in a book, Reading Rainbow. <laughs> Alrighty. So, yeah, so, I mean, there's Bye. that. Uh, let's see. Oh, and my last why comes from me. I want to know why Tigger Man ain't trying to go see Blue Beetle. First of all, you never asked me. Mm hmm. That would man. be why. All right. That would be why you never asked me. Mm hmm. I was yeah. going to, I actually was going to go this past weekend to go see it, but my whole thing was like, okay, so each time that I go to the theater <laughs> here in Baltimore, well, it's the one I go to in Towson. Each time I go, it's that always. I went to see. Um, what did we go see? Oh no, not that one. You're thinking about. Oh. You're thinking about the um, that uh, historical theater. I'm not talking about that one. I okay. was talking about the one over by Towson Mall. Every time I go in there, something weird happens. So most recently will be the Barbie movie, and we sat there. Now, I'm a person. They used I... to get Bobby. They used to get down on me a lot because I would buy extra tickets. Only so I wouldn't... Well, I would buy extra tickets, A, because I didn't know who else was going to show. I would invite people, and if people show, the then it would be cool. At the last minute. But, at the last minute. But I would also buy extra tickets because I didn't want to sit next to nobody. I just have this weird mm. thing about it. And it's just... Yeah, so I'm sitting there in the theater, and we buy... Okay, so it was at the very back of the theater, or at the very top, mm. however you want to look. So, it's only three seats there. I bought the two seats next to me thinking, okay, you know what? Not going to be an issue. Nobody's going to just buy one seat. Well, guess what? Oh, Molly decided to sit her ass next to us, which was fine. Up mm. until the point that she decided to take off her shoes. Yep. And I don't know. <laughs> just getting comfortable. <laughs> It's just, and it goes back to what I'm saying about people just not knowing that they stink. Like, you smell the same smell that I smell. Like, we, yeah. like you know what your feet giving, girl. Like, you know that you can clear out a room when them toes decide to make their presence known. You know it. <laughs> like, you know it. I mean, same way with y'all in the sit-down win. Some of y'all got funky sit-down win, and you don't know it. Y'all got bad friends in your life. because not funky sit-down win. <laughs> listen. Tigger man, you and I both know people in our past that had yes. funky yes. sit down win. Yes. And name you know. Names. Name names. I, I will not. Oh, I will. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. What was that one we used to call? Um, Fire crotch? We'll just call her that. No, not that one. Not that one. Uh oh. <laughs> we had horrible names. For, well, God, we're horrible people. Why do y'all listen to this show? Anyway. <laughs> All right, so you got that. You got to sit down when this little... What was the one that caught that infection? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <Don't> Anyways. <laughs> no, but I mean, even with that, you had, you know, you got people that they're just not self-aware. And I don't know how you can be not self-aware about something like that. But you know what? That's where, like I said, it comes to you not having true friends in your life because wasn't i that friend to share that information to a man don't you remember when i had to have that difficult conversation with friends of ours yep so i mean y'all out here uh don't ignore the issue that'll be the positive thing that i say this week don't ignore the issue be a good friend honestly for those that are out here and they may not know that other people have you know are talking about them and stuff like that because it happened in our office today like somebody was being talked about and you know people were talking and you know making jokes and all that and i don't know the person i feel like i know them because i smelled them all day but i don't actually know them so, you know, it's kind of awkward for me, but I'm just thinking, hmm, who in your life didn't go, whoo, baby, <laughs> hold on there, whoa there, Nelly, like, who didn't have that conversation with you? So, anyway, up next, uh, news to make you nauseous. A black man was lynched by three white men in Florida in the year of 2023. Say his name, Gary Jackson. These three white men, Ryan Nichols, Daniel DeGuardia, and Holden Dodson shot a black 39-year-old husband and father, shot him multiple times in the chest as he pleaded for his life, and the sole justification offered to police when questioned was that they thought he was homeless. As you are sitting at home watching this, that is still the sole justification that these three dandruff flakes gave for murdering a man in cold blood. 
which is absolutely genius of them considering the fact that if they told police that they killed this man because he was black, it would have made worldwide news and they would be the three new temporary faces of racism. Oh, but because they said that they killed him because he was homeless, it barely got any media coverage. Yo, make sure you blow this story up. And now, now. Say what? Now. News to make you nauseous on WRTR Real Talk Radio. Let's go. These are some of the stories you might not read about in the New York Times, the Washington Post, or the Wall Street Journal. It's news to make you nauseous. All right, Tigger Man, take it away. Say what, Georgia? Say what? Oh, here we go with Georgia. What you got to say? <laughs> <laughs> a man and two women in Georgia were arrested last week after authorities found a three-year-old near death from ingesting a fatal amount of fentanyl. What is that word? Fentanyl. Fentanyl. Oh, yeah, here we go. I told you. Oh. <laughs> no, I was trying to be funny. No, you fentanyl. weren't. <clears throat> no, I definitely was. You were so weren't. Go ahead. I only did that because I was waiting for this other one to say something. He said that he wasn't <laughs> going to say nothing. Anyway, and just... <laughs> <laughs> I'm praying for you, baby. It's okay, fine. anyway. Anyway. <laughs> I feel like a character should be made no, just for taking man here. And the one year old who appeared to have been burned with a grill and was drinking from a bottle filled with ill live maggots. Oh, okay. <laughs> Matthew Moss and Talithia Broman, mm. the children's parents, along with Asia Bartley, were taken into custody <laughs> on Friday. According to an incident report obtained by the Augustus Press, deputies with the Richmond County Sheriff's Office and emergency medical services personnel on the night of August 17th mm -hmm. responded to a call in reference to an unresponsive three-year-old girl at a residence located in the 2100 block of Howard Drive in Augustus. Mm. Look at him, Bobby. He concentrating like shit. Look at him. <laughs> listen, listen. Listen, mm -hmm. when I when I come down, oh. then I'll be fine. Will you? How about that? Shut up. Upon arriving at the scene, first responders located a three-year-old in a semi-lucid and semi-conscious state and, and dosed the child with Narcan. That sounds a rapey. That, mm, a drug that rapidly reverses opioid overdoses. Mm-hmm. Opioid. I said opioid. No, you didn't. You said yes, opioid. No, I didn't. I said, oh, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I, look, stop. Words okay. mean things. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> I know. I feel like we need somebody that does sign language or something. I, I mean, it. it's an audio show, but still, I feel like that would help. Oh, take a man. Oh, I'm sorry. Did we hurt your feet, fees? It's okay. No. Oh. Not at all. Okay. Keep reading. Don't let him do you like that. Exactly. Don't. Not at all. You 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 make Snuffleupagus proud. You go. Oh, okay. I'm done. Yeah. Are you? That's the end of the. They got arrested. They was charged. They in jail. Mm. Okay. I, I I'm gonna act like we. And, um, that, news ma that news made me nauseous. Oh. I, one baby burnt by, burnt with the grill. Mm. The other one. Wait, there was two babies involved. Uh, right. Nothing. Never oh, mind. never mind. I think you I missed said, like a paragraph. I, I, or something. I first said I said a three year old, and then I said a one year old. Did you? I did. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. well. Did you say it? Did you say it out loud? <laughs> I did. I did. Did you say it to people we can see? Like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, yo, y'all not gonna clown me on here. Uh -oh. Don't do that. Okay. Uh -uh. All right. Nah, that's more too. It's too long. But mm -hmm. anyway, all three of them were arrested for the abuse of these children. Mm -hmm. okay. And like I said, that just made me nauseous because you have this one-year-old who's drinking live maggots out of a bottle. Uh, yeah, that's that's bad. When I hear stories like that, the only thing I really want to know is, um, you know, like, you know, how they kind of look, maybe. Um, oh, you want to know if they white people? Oh no! Oh no! No no! They're black. Yeah, yeah. No, no, they're black. Oh. they're black. No, they no, black. niggas. They're black. <sighs> oh, 
They are black, yes. Oh, lie. <laughs> and, and let this be a lesson. I, for, I, I don't lie. Let this be a lesson lie. for white people out there. I'm so uh, for the white people that, you know, the like one or two that may listen, let this be a lesson that, you know, even when we see some of our people doing fuck shit like this, we'd be like, oh, man, it was a nigga. But we own that shit. We don't sit there and then try to rewrite history. We don't sit there and then try to bury the truth. We don't sit there and then try to talk louder or use our privilege over you to then kind of push this narrative that we want to push instead of the truth. We just kind of own that shit. Sit on that just a little just a little bit. All right. Say what the real. Say what? All right. So Whoopi Goldberg shares that she's not a lesbian after Raven Simone tells her that she's always given her the oh. lesbian. She's always given her lesbian vibes. She says, women have been asking me this for uh, uh, as long as I've been around. What do you care about who I love? And I love that as a response. But what made me nauseous about this whole story? I have to ask you that. What's nauseous about this What's story? What's nauseating is this overwhelming, I guess, desire to know what goes on in people's bedroom. And it's just, it's okay, well, hmm. It, like, is that going to val? I don't know. I just feel like certain things should be left off the table until people are ready to share that with you. Like, for example, even if Whoopi is out here munching box, that's fine, but at the same time, like, let let her tell you that. You know what I'm saying? Let her come to you. I don't, I've never been a fan of outing anybody. Uh-huh. That nauseates me. Um, I've never been a fan of this whole, hmm, well, I guess she's doing it too. Hmm, wonder who she, like, I've just, I've never understood the fascination with everybody in everyone else's bedroom. Monitor what's going on in yours, because <clears throat> y'all, from these letters that y'all send in, a lot of y'all got some issues there. But you can contact our guest and behavioral health. Drop that uh, email one more again. <laughs> First of all, I have a question for you. Is there, is there anything in the news that has um, made you nauseous? Oh, anything that you've heard in the news or anything? Um, mm. I, know, I really don't watch the news. I don't read a lot about the news. Like, especially like when it comes to celebrity life. Like, I don't care about it. Oh, love much. it. I don't know. I, like I, at the moment, I would say no. There's nothing that. Ah, well, if you want these and more nauseating news stories, make sure you follow us on Twitter at WRTR Radio. You can also follow me. I'm at M A R C U S S M O O T. That's Marcus Smoot. Uh, that would be your cue. Hooked on oh, phonics. I thought you. I thought you was going to say something else. Uh, no <laughs> lyrics. Not. Oh, you thought I was going to tag lyrics. Starting off, like, I, I was wondering, did you have an edible when you started off? No. Oh, now see, now he's coming for you now. No. Yes, but see, I can uh, read. Again. First of all, I can read too. I can read fluently. Like I said, I can read to when I, I speak can... what I read. Other people understand it, and they're not going. Wait, where do these <laughs> other people come <laughs> from? Hold on, no, 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 no. Wait a minute. Mm-hmm. Wait a minute. So mm-hmm. we are not going to do that. Oh, no, we are we? not going to do that because you are the same way. If you was to have an edible too, we are not going to do that. Mm. Well, not, uh, oh. Well, I mean, <laughs> well, oh, okay. it is what it is. Mm. Speaking it, of it which, is what it is. Speaking of like which, I said, wait, nothing. Uh, uh-uh, shut up. Real talk. Up next. Anyway, and <laughs> you can find me, Tigger Man, mm-hmm. on shut up on Facebook at Tony Tigger Man Nelson on on and on Instagram and Twitter at um Tigger Man eighty two. Mm-hmm. And you can find me on OnlyFans, too. Okay. Mm. And our guest host today? Uh, you can find me on TikTok and Facebook at Bobby Jarrell. On Instagram is Bobby BBCBA. All right. Up next, we got Real Talk, cornerstone of the show, and the exit. You know what's not harmful to society? Queer people. You want to know what is? Capitalism. Let's talk about it. Largely due to the policy and politics of conservative lawmakers, Americans are drowning in the cost of living and dying and breathing 
and blinking. The wealthy 1% earned $65 trillion last year. And even worse, they might pay less in taxes than your uncle who works in construction. There are 34 million people starving in this country. 9 million of those people are children. But rather than focusing on providing additional aid, Republicans are criminalizing trans youth and drag queens. We're still making children pay to eat at school. Schools that may not have enough funding for supplies, field trips, or to pay their teachers a livable wage. Teachers that are now responsible for guiding their students through math, social studies, science, and gun violence. Rather than resources, homeless Americans often face criminalization and violence. While 16 million buildings stand vacant in this country, don't get me started on the goddamn housing market. COVID absolutely desecrated the finances of millions of families. And all in a country where billionaires exist, and again, they might pay less less taxes than you. I'm here to get my black card back. Let's see what you lost it for. Oh, they got a whole rap sheet. You never watched a black movie. Don't watch it, chicken. Doesn't play spades. I was sheltered as a child, okay? Just give me some grace, man. I'm a changed man. You ain't got no aunties? No grandma? Nothing? You know what? <laughs> Let's not make any hasty decisions. Let's get a boy a chance. Rapid fire, all right? How do you use your microwave? I hit 30 seconds until I get to my desired time frame. You see another black man on the street. Y'all about to have an interaction. He say hi. What do you say back? That's a trick question. He doesn't say hi and I don't say hi either. We just head nod at each other and go about our business. Hmm. Okay, okay. I let you slap us. He a little stiff though. He a little... Just a little bit. He got it. Don't forget the kick. Yeah. I'll wait for the kid. Okay, okay. <laughs> well, uh, the committee, they stamped you now. You good to go, my brother. All right, brother. You want us again? You go ahead and get you some chicken on the way out. Thank you. Hot sauce to the left. Oh, I don't eat hot sauce. <laughs> free Tory Lanes, free Tory Lanes. He's still going to jail. Well, 10 years is too long. He's still going to jail. Meg lied about this and this and he's still going to jail. And to some of the men who are defending him because you're probably violent too, he's your representation. How about you go and grab a bunk beneath him so you can spend the next 10 years greasing his scalp? Maybe he can be transferred to Butner Federal Prison so him and Robert can have talent shows in that motherfucker. We know y'all love to defend rapists too. And this goes to the pick me's too. I'm a woman and I think he's innocent. Okay, so then go to the bathroom, toot that ass up on a sink and take some pictures that he can trade on the block for ramen noodles and it doesn't surprise me that so many of you are taking up for him even though you didn't give much of a fuck about him before this incident because whether it's a celebrity or that creepy uncle that still gets invited to thanksgiving a black man can do some horrible vile disgusting shit to a black woman and when he's finally held accountable you motherfuckers will act like he's been falsely imprisoned like martin luther king there are organizations dedicated to freeing black men who were actually wrongly incarcerated but y'all want to waste your energy on elmer fudd it's Real Talk on WRTR Real Talk Radio. We keep it real. Definitely keeping it real this and each week here on WRTR Real Talk Radio. Welcome to another segment of Real Talk. And I asked a few questions online this week. I asked, wait a minute. Y'all be letting y'all friends use the N-word around you? And, you know, people had responses. And, and whew, it's just been. Who, 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 who was this ass? Um, there was a TikTok video. I forget the. I meant to screenshot it, but long story short, the person was asking people if they let their friends, their white friends, say the word, the N word around okay. them. Say nigga. So, like, and a lot of people were like, well, I mean, it depends. You know, I guess, like, the younger cats, they were like, well, it depends. I mean, you know, this my homie forever and all this other crap. So I just mm -hmm. wanted, I took it to mm -hmm. you guys to ask, I mean, what you think? Is it cool? <laughs> like if you have like that lifelong friend that in your family, you know, feels like family, come over, can get in your, go in your refrigerator, all that good stuff. And no, they use. I don't, I don't even, I don't even like my black friends. Cause mm -hmm. I don't, I don't really even use the word. Hmm. What about you, B? No, mm -mm, absolutely not. Yeah, absolutely not. No, like I, 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 I like. There's no way that I, I like put up. Just the, the 
There's videos that I see online, and I know that within their own circles, when oh. there are no black people, they use the word freely. Uh -huh. like they, but I don't think they understand the history behind it. And I think even, like, you know, I, and I'm, not, I'm not going to use the word at all, but I think, like, even within our community, like, the black people don't all know the history behind it. So, I think we're so far, even though, you know, slavery ended not too long ago, but they're so far removed from the truth of the body and where the word or, um, originated from that they don't understand the true meaning of it. And so, like, for those the white people that are, are using it, like, out of respect, they shouldn't want to use it. And as a black person, out of respect for yourself, you shouldn't be okay with people that you, white people using that word around you. But that's just my opinion. Perfectly that's, stated. That's just, I agree. I agree with that. Perfectly stated. Um, off the internet. Ooh, bitch, I smell your sweater. Uh, Andre Wood said, hell no. Willie Mead said, <laughs> Willie Mead said, some do. It's sad, like that episode of Bel Air. I have not seen that one, so I don't understand that reference um, yet. Uh, let's see, Antonio Adams says, I prefer if they didn't use any words that begin with N. Y'all are... <laughs> Booga Dem Bean said, I don't give a fuck if I was adopted by a black family as a baby. They better not <laughs> shut they better shut that shit up. He is dumb. <laughs> he is dumb. And Camilla Jones <laughs> said not. Uh Candy off the internet said that she starts side eyeing the minute that they mutter anything stand uh going with an end. So or starting with an end. Uh, yeah, so I guess that's one thing that yeah. I guess unanimous. The older crowd says no. The younger crowd is saying yay. All right. Um. Let's see what else. Oh, here's the last thing. What's off limits when it comes to comedy? So, like, what things are you? Mm, certain people don't have <laughs> filters, and you know they don't have boundaries. So, what's off limits when it comes to comedy? You know. <clears throat> I mean, comedy is comedy. Okay. Me, comedy is comedy. But then... This goes back to, like you said, the N-word. Uh-huh. There are certain Caucasian comedians oh. who will use it in their comedy. Mm hmm Because it's comedy. Okay. But then... Sometimes I'll be thinking, are they really saying it because they want to say that or are they... Or are they actually just being funny about it? Which is that, that's not cool. it's not cool either way. That's a whole separate um, issue, right? Um, mm -mm. I, but to me, I don't really because it's it's comedy to me. It's comedy to me. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't. It depends. People say anything. What what do, what do you think? Because I'm just like it's a joke. Um, it's meant to be comedy. Okay. So nobody should really take it serious. Okay. So what things do you deem that's off limits? So you don't think that anything is off limits? I believe. No. <clears throat> okay. What about you, B? No. Um. I would say like white comedians using the N word. I would say right. that's off limits. But outside right. of that, I don't think anything is off limits off, as long it's as perfect. it's funny. If it's exactly. Funny, then it's good. But like otherwise, like, you know, you work your work on your your uh, material and do better. And I think people get offended by things a little bit too easily. Like sometimes if like if it's not you directly and you're harmed by it, why are you offended? Like, exactly. Like, you that's why I said it. That's why I said it. Well I mean for me it also goes with who the comedian is too or who's delivering it. Even like mm -hmm. even in dark humor. If and it depends on audience. So I mean it's Who's delivering it? I mean, you know, do you are you that person that can get away with it? Certain people can get away with certain things that other people can't get away with. I mean, it's just like it's the way that life works. It's, I mean, for example, white people, crystal meth, yes, potato salad, no. So I mean, you like <laughs> certain things you go with. See, that, that joke I cannot see. That's all flipping. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> oh man! Special shout outs and thanks to Bobby for putting up with I our cannot. crap tonight on WRTR Real Talk Radio. Man, thank you so much for hosting with us and just clowning with us and being a good overall spirit. 
Thank y'all. I appreciate y'all having me. But some of the stuff he said to me was off limits. How about that? No, it wasn't. What's your edible, what's your edible How about that? that? <laughs> 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 Do not go back and listen to this episode. Right. I'm going back and listen. <laughs> and I'm going to say, you know what? You know what? I'm coming after you. I'm coming after you. Matter of fact, that is what I'm titling I'm this episode. After you. I am titling this episode The Reading Rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> the illiterate rainbow. There you go. <laughs> just, just know I'm coming for you. <laughs> oh. One more again, Bobby. Give them uh, your social media information and where they can find you. Facebook and TikTok is uh, Bobby Jarrell, B O B B Y J A R E L. And Instagram is Bobby the B C B A. Much love to you, Ticket Man. Thank you for at least, you know, showing up. Trying. Uh huh. You did your thing. Yay, you. Yeah. I ain't got nothing else to say. Lyric special message to you. Please get back. Oh, we love you. We'll talk to you soon. Tell a friend to tell a friend about the podcast. Well, I'll let y'all next week. W-R-T-R, Real Talk Radio.